Hey, hey everybody, welcome back. Um, I've got some allergy congestion things going on tonight, so we're gonna make this one very quick um, because my voice does not sound great. But I have another book review for you guys tonight. Um, so if you are here, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Um, let me know, as always, in the comments, your thoughts on tonight's book. And um, especially this one in particular, because I would love, I hope that for other people's sake, that I'm the only one who has such strong feelings about this book. Um, but before we get into the video, um, if you're new here, my name is Caitlin, and I am your geek girlfriend over here on YouTube and on Instagram. And... Um, this is my Bookie Babe book review series, and tonight we'll be doing book number five for 2024. My goal is 24 books, so we are officially one-sixth of the way through, um, and we're working on book number six right now, so I'm almost one-fourth of the way through, but anywho, um, tonight's book review is actually of the third book in the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. It's called As Good as Dead, and it's by Holly Jackson. I have reviewed the other two books in this series, so if you have not read the other two books, um, stop watching right now and go check out my review of the other two and go pick up those books and read them first because I do feel like you do have to read the series in order to really get the idea of at least from my point of view, how disappointing or devastating this book is. Um, and the other ones just kind of set up the story, set up the relationship. So I do recommend, like, reading them in order. But they all do have, like, their own standalone story. So you can, you know, do with that what you will. Um, so we're going to get right into it because, like I said, I've got some congestion things going on. I don't want to be on here too, too long before I have to blow my nose or something. So... Um, we're just going to get right into it. Um, this, for me, was the slowest read of the series. I was really disappointed in this book overall. I'm just going to come right out and say it. I'll kill the suspense. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed the second book. It was probably the best book I've read since Verity, and I talk more about that in the review. But it like it was not even a question. Five-star book for me. And um, I just... This one, I don't know. I I wanted so much more, I think, out of it. I don't even know really what I was expecting. Um, I definitely wanted more of Pip and Robbie's relationship. I wanted, I think I wanted more closure overall. I wanted Pip to kind of like, I, I guess I just wanted more from her. Um, and like, she claims to be a good girl, and then she kind of, like, you know, in the second one, kind of the good girl gone bad type of a thing, but this kind of takes that to the next level, and I just feel like if I was in her situation, like, I would not make the same decisions that she made, and this book goes into very graphic detail about, um, this is a slight spoiler, but at one point, Pip gets abducted and like gets she gets away which that's the major climax of the book and I did give that away a little bit but I'm not going to tell you who it is because that is a separate big plot point spoiler um but her decision after that and how she decides to move forward after that I just I don't know. I just feel like it's not very realistic for a teenager with a good support system to make such a decision. And I just feel like, I don't know, I just really had a hard time reading the rest of the book because of that. I will, this, it took me like two days to read the last 100 pages of the book. And I read the second book in like three days total. So all in all, I still read it within a week, and the ending of part one is the most fast-paced part of the book, but overall, this book is just slow, slow, slow. It has a slow start, and then it kind of picks up a little bit, and you start to get more information, and then it just, the climax happens, and then it literally, like, is just slow, 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 and it really doesn't get, it's not even like it has a good ending, like, the it just... I just was disappointed overall, especially compared to the second one. The second one by far is the best in the series, in my opinion. Some people might disagree with me and think that this one is 
best because it's the craziest one. I think this one is the most unrealistic, and that makes it really hard for me. And yes, I know, it's a fiction book, so, like, none of these events are real. However, I don't know. I guess that just goes back to, like, my faith in humanity and my faith in Pip as a person. I guess she just isn't as good of a girl as she claims to be. I'm just going to say that. Um, and there's just a lot of like, like she has a lot of trauma in this book, a lot of PTSD in this book from what she experiences in the second one, but then also what happens to her in this one. So this poor girl like needs therapy. She needs like once, twice, three times weekly sessions of therapy. Like this girl has severe anxiety. She is like, and it's sad. But I was so let down by this book that it turned me off of Holly Jackson for a while. I got all of her books for Christmas and I was really excited about them. And this one like really turned me off of her for right now. I had to like step away and take a break. Originally I was planning on just binging all of them and I had to like walk away and be like, okay, I need to read something else in between and then to come back to her other novels after a while because I just yeah I just was so I wanted so much more out of it and especially after the second one this was just a big letdown I gave it two stars on Goodreads overall so I would probably rate it like a three out of ten the only redeeming quality that it has is probably the end of part one which is the major climax I it does nothing I would have perfectly been fine not reading this one like if I would have just read the first two I would have been like yep series complete like don't need anything else and this one I was just kind of like eh. it almost makes me wish there was another one to redeem this one but sadly there's not there's only the novella and I haven't heard great things about the novella either so that's that. I do apologize for the spoiler. Um, I try to keep spoilers out of this, but I felt for the purpose of this video and kind of the whole mood of this video, I felt it important to share the spoiler, the small spoiler and this one, just so you can kind of decide, like, is this something that, because if you're triggered by that concept, then just avoid this one and end with the second one and just call it a day. Um, but for me, this one is, was a letdown, and here we go. The congestion is starting again, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off for this one, but let me know in the comments if you feel the same way about this book or this series. Let me know your thoughts overall of the series. I would say it's a good, like, the first, the first book is good, the second book is great, the third one is not so good, but overall the series is a good series, especially for young adult readers. Um, this book, goes into more graphic detail about some of the crimes. However, there's still not a lot of language. There's no sex. Um, there's no nothing like that. So it still is appropriate for young adult readers. Um, and I'm glad that I read the series overall, but I just need a break from Holly Jackson for a little bit after this one because it just, I was just a little bit, not a little bit, I was disappointed. But thank you all so much for watching and, um, I will see you guys in the next one. Hopefully the next review will be a little bit better, but they can't all be winners. Am I right? See you guys next time.